Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. John chapter 14, look at verse number 16. John 14, verse number 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Let me read it out of the Amplified. It says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that he may remain with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take to its heart, because it does not see him or know and recognize him, but you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. Amen. <laughs> We're talking from the subject matter of the present day ministry of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The present day ministry of the Holy Spirit. The reason why God wants me to teach this series on Holy Spirit is because many people don't recognize and know what is his ministry. What is he here for? Why did he come? Why did Jesus send him to us? Amen. Jesus did not send Holy Spirit to us to make us feel good. Jesus did not send Holy Spirit to us to make us shout, run, skip, hop, or spit out of our mouth. That's not why Holy Spirit has been sent to us, amen? And many times because we don't have any knowledge, you know, we're being destroyed, amen? We're missing out on the third person of the Godhead because we just don't know, amen? We, we see in church where people jumping and shouting and all that, and they label it as that's the Holy Ghost. Well, if I can identify what the ministry of Holy Spirit is in the Word of God, it might... Uh, it might cause some of the things that we have been taught, some of the things that we have saw in church to go away. Amen. And my assignment as a teacher is to teach the word of God. Amen. Now, here the Bible says that Jesus says, I'm going to send you another helper. So it must mean that we need some what? We need some help. Amen. <laughs> amen. And Holy Spirit has been designed to help us. Amen. 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 Now, Go to Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> On last lesson, we found out that Holy Spirit is not all on top of us, you know? He's not all over us. You know how people say in church, he's all over me. Well, if he's all over you, you know, you might shake him off. Amen. It's kind of like a wide receiver. He has a cornerback that's all over him. Well, he might be able to shake loose the cornerback to score a touchdown. And that's how some Christians are. They could shake the Holy Ghost off because here's what they say. I'm going to lay my religion down. <laughs> well, see, if you understand that Holy Spirit is not over you, that he's in us and for us and with us. Amen. 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 Holy Spirit is with us, amen, and for us. Amen. Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> Look at verse number 31. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? So if the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit represents the Godhead. And the Bible says, if God be for us and Holy Spirit is God, then if Holy Spirit is for us, it don't care. It doesn't matter who against us. Amen? It doesn't matter because he is for us. All right? We found out that he is with us. Hebrews 13 and 5. The Bible says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. So he is with us, amen? And then we need to find out that he is in us. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He is in us. 
when I recognize that Holy Spirit is in me, as a believer now, as a believer, when you get saved, Holy Spirit takes you, baptizes you into the family of God. Then Holy Spirit takes residence on the inside of you. Amen. And everywhere you go, he goes. Everywhere you lay down, he lay down. Praise the Lord. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Look at verse number 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 16. Look what it says. <clears throat> know ye not that the temple of God, uh, that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth where? <clears throat> In you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the, temple of, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. I just want you to understand, Holy Spirit is where? In you. Wherever you go, he goes. Whatever you drink, <laughs> I praise the Lord, amen, amen, amen. Now, go to Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5. We also talked about the two groups of nines in connection with the work of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Holy Spirit has come into our lives to pr produce the fruit of the Spirit, amen, in our lives that God might be glorified. So if I don't see the fruit manifesting, it could mean that I am not allowing Holy Spirit to do his ministry in me. Amen. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter number 5. Look at verse number 22. What is Holy Spirit up to? What is he doing in my life? Amen. Look what he says. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, what? Gentleness, goodness, faith, what? Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So Holy Spirit's job, his ministry, is to produce these fruit in us. So if I am not loving like God wants me to love, then Holy Spirit, we're not allowing Holy Spirit to do his ministry in us. If I don't have the joy of the Lord that is my strength, then hope we're not allowing Holy Spirit to work in us. That's what he's trying to do. See, once I get saved, listen to me now, I still have my same mentality that I had when I was in the world. And that's why God says we need to renew our mind. And then once I begin the renewing process, and I begin to allow Holy Spirit to do his perfect ministry in me, I'll begin to exhibit these characteristics. I'll begin to love folk, amen? Even my enemy, even my boss, amen? I will love him with the love of God, amen? Instead of having a pity party, I'll have the joy of the Lord, amen? Because now Holy Spirit is working on me. He's doing something in me, amen? And then I'll have peace, amen? I, I, look. On, 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 on Saturday morning, I begin, the Holy Spirit dropped this in my spirit, <clears throat> that there is no schizophrenia in him. Amen? Because he has peace. And so the, the more I yield myself to Holy Spirit, the more peace I have. Amen? So when I am in turmoil, it could be I'm not allowing Holy Spirit now to do his work in me and work on me. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. So, so we got the peace, right? Then it says what, long-suffering? I'll begin to be patient with people. Uh, you'll begin to be patient with your mate. Ooh, praise the Lord, amen. Instead of you getting upset and getting all bothered, when he don't take out the trash, when you told him to take out the trash, you just be long suffering. Praise the Lord, amen. Holy Ghost will say, hey, leave that alone. He heard you the first time. Praise the Lord, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I had to hit home with somebody, amen. All right, all right. Now go, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's talk about some other things today. Let's talk about this second group of nine, that Holy Spirit is here to work with us and for us 
and to us, amen? <clears throat> now, I truly believe that all nine parts of the fruit should be functioning and operating in the life of every believer. Amen? I don't think that God the Father would ask Holy Spirit to skip every other one of us when it comes down to the fruit. Right? So it is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I believe that all of these nine gifts that we're about to read should be functioning in the local congregation, in the body of Christ. But because people are not sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is trying to do and are not knowledgeable of his personal ministry to us, we will dismiss the gifts and we will say, they're not for us today. And then the body will be handicapped because these gifts are for us. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to walk through these things and we're going to see what Holy Spirit is trying to do. Verse number 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Okay, stop. So, the fact that Paul wrote that he doesn't want us ignorant suggests to me that people have been ignorant when it comes down to these gifts. I go, I go a step further. Many churches will not teach about the gifts of Holy Spirit because to them it's controversial. To them, it's not for them. Because after all, I'm a denominational church. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me, let me, I, I want to make sure I read this right. Let me see. Did it say, now concerning spiritual gifts, Baptists? Did it say, now concerning spiritual gifts, Catholics? Did it say, now concerning spiritual gifts, Methodists, Presbyterian? No, it said, brethren, if I'm saved, except that Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I'm a brethren. Okay, look at your neighbor and say, brethren, brethren. he's talking to you. <laughs> Amen. Okay, if you're sitting next to the sister and say, sisterin, he's talking to you. Amen. So he says he doesn't want the brethren the sisters of the body of Christ to be ignorant of what he's about to tell us. Yeah. All right. All right. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the Bible says, you do error, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Yeah. Yeah. You make an error because you are ignorant. You make an error because you just don't know. Amen. See, when I was growing up in church, I stayed away from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I stayed away from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I stayed away from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Yes, I did. I skipped those, those, those passages. Now, now I did, I, did read, I did read in 13 about the love, the first, 1 through 8. I read about charity never faileth. I did read that. But all the other stuff, I skipped over that. Because I was convinced that it was not for me. Amen? I had all that I needed. But then I started to read the scripture and found out these things ought to be operating, functioning in the local body. Well, let's see what he says. Let's see what he says. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. <clears throat> ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Uh-oh. Holy Ghost is involved in your salvation. You can't even call Jesus Lord unless Holy Ghost lets you know he's Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 4. 
Now there are diversities of gifts. Look, 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 look up, look up. Is the word gifts with an S or without the S? So there's more than one gift. There are gifts. I just, I'm just trying to make this as plain as I can. Yeah. Amen? Because some people are take a gift and say this is all that we have. And he said, look, they got some gifts. Praise the Lord. Okay? Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. Mm. Let me read verse 4 out of the Amplified. Now there are distinctive varieties and distributions of endowments, gifts, extraordinary powers, distinguishing certain Christians due to the power of divine grace operating in their souls by the Holy Spirit. And they vary, but the Holy Spirit remains the same. And there are distinctive varieties of services, administration, but it is the same Lord who is served. Verse 6, back to King James. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Now look how Paul lays this thing out, verse 5, 4, 5, and 6, to show us about the Godhead. Verse 4 says, the same Spirit. Verse 5 says, the same Lord. Verse 6 says, the same God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just let us know that, 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 look, Holy Spirit working all this thing. All right? Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Amen? For to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit. To another, faith, by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning the spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these work it. That one and self-same spirit divide into every man severally as he will. Hallelujah. Now, let's see if I can break this down. There are nine gifts just as there were nine fruits of the spirit. Spirit of God is responsible for the distribution of the gifts. So none of us can say, I want that one. Holy Spirit says, I'll give Brother Pew what I want to give Brother Pew. Because it's as I will and not as you will. All right? Now, take, 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 take note of this now. Because these nine nine gifts are divided into three categories, okay? There is the first category of utterance, something you say. And those are the gift of prophecy, the gifts of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. Then there are the power gifts. Those are the gifts that do something. Faith, working of miracles, and the gifts of healing. Then there are the revelation gifts. Those are the gifts that reveal something. Those are the gifts of wisdom, the gifts of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Three divisions. The gift, the utterance which are the prophecies, tongues, and interpretation, the power gifts, 
which are faith, miracles, and healing, and then the revelation gifts, wisdom, knowledge, and discerning the spirits. So now, let me define these gifts. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm just going to take my time so that you can get an understanding. Proverbs say, in all your getting, get understanding. Amen. <laughs> Personally, look, my assignment is not to make folk feel good. You know, have traditional church where we shout all over the place, Amen. where we run, jump, and do all that stuff. Look, when you, look, I found out after you leave the place and all you had was gravy, you still hungry. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You still getting your butt kicked out there in the world because you don't have enough word in you. Amen. To defend yourself against the enemy, to tell the enemy where he needs to go. But when you get knowledge, when you get the word of God, you can leave this place and say, oh, I know that now. I know for myself that when the enemy comes up against me, I know how to fight him now. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So definition time. The word of wisdom. Word of wisdom is the supernatural revelation by God. Concerning the divine purpose in the mind and will of God. The word of wisdom is the supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the divine purpose in the, in the mind of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Want me to say it one more time? Woo, praise the Lord. Word of wisdom is the supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the divine purposes in the mind and will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you didn't get that time, we'll have a CD ready for you next week. <laughs> word of knowledge. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the word and I'm going to show you different instances of all these gifts. Amen. Praise the Lord. The word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation. Look, just put the little dot, dot, dot thing at the top. By the Holy Spirit, here's the difference now, of certain facts in the mind of God. Amen? So the word of knowledge is dealing with some facts. Okay? The gift of faith is the ability to believe God in such a way that, on, that he honors their word as his word and he miraculously brings it to pass. The gift of faith. Amen? Is the ability to believe God in such a way that he honors their word as his word. Amen? And he miraculously brings it to pass. Gifts of healing. And this is one where folk get in trouble at right here. Because they want the healing their way. You know? And they always want to get on Benny about blowing on folk. But he said, look, it's some gifts. So, it, look, God can use blowing and get the same healing results as he can with laying on the hands. So I'm not going to limit God and how he's going to get my healing. Amen? So gifts of healing is the ability to deliver the sick and to destroy the works of the devil in the human body. Amen. The ability to deliver the sick and destroy the works of the devil in the human body. Then there are the working of miracles. Amen. The working of miracles is the intervention in the ordinary course of nature. A temporary suspension of natural order. Hallelujah. Y'all say, boy, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Intervention in the ordinary course of nature. A temporary suspension 
of natural things. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Gifts of prophecy. Utterance in a known tongue. Utterance in a known tongue. Discerning of spirits. <clears throat> Insight into the spirit realm. Insight into the spirit realm. Now, all this is going to make sense in just a few minutes, amen? Just, 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 just hang with me. Just hang with me a few more seconds. Got a few more definitions and we're going to be through. Amen? <clears throat> Gifts of tongues. Languages never learned by the speaker. Languages never learned by the speaker. Not understood by the mind of the speaker. <laughs> you got to get that one. I didn't learn it. I don't understand it. Amen. You got that? Never learned by the speaker. Not understood by the mind of the speaker. Now, it's critical that you understand this one because when you get filled with Holy Spirit. And one of the evidences of being filled with Holy Spirit is that of speaking in other tongues. Your mind going to tell you, you sound crazy. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. That's why, that's why I'm taking my time to teach you. Because I'm telling you what's going to happen. Amen. And then there's the interpretation of tongues. Amen. That is the showing forth of the meaning of the utterances in other tongues. Amen. The showing forth of the meaning of an utterance in other tongues. Okay. Let me deal with the word of knowledge. Can I, can I deal with the word of knowledge today? Okay. The word of knowledge. Now, the word of knowledge is not natural knowledge. Where you go attain it in some higher education, you get a degree or something like that. I mean, it's, it's not natural things, okay? So, so don't think that just because you have a PhD means that you got the word of knowledge. That's not the knowledge I'm talking about. I'm talking about supernatural knowledge. Knowledge that comes from God, amen? Hallelujah. Knowledge of facts and things that, that, that you don't even, in the natural, you wouldn't even know. Hallelujah. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It's, it's not knowledge I obtain through study. Amen? You can read all the books you want, but the word of knowledge that the Holy Ghost gives us does not come in the form of book knowledge. Okay? Neither does it come because you're old. Amen? <laughs> the word of knowledge don't have no... Look, God will give the word of knowledge to whomever will be willing to receive the word of knowledge. Whether they're 10 years old or 100 years old, your age does not play a part. You know, say, well, well she old, well, well, she ought to have a word of knowledge. No, no, baby, she still, she, 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 my, her mind ain't right. All right. Now, here are some examples of the word of knowledge. Let's go to, uh, 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 who, let's go, go to John, John chapter 4. Let's see Jesus operating in the word of knowledge. Now, here Jesus is at the well, about to get a drink of water. And here comes this Samaritan woman. She coming in the heat of the day to get some water, right? Jesus asked her for a drink of water. As she turns around and tells Jesus, look, you don't know who you're asking water from. Then Jesus said, if you know who was asking you for water, you'll be getting me some water. 
He said, well, look, I'll make an exchange. I'll give you some water that you will never be thirsty again. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> he said, I'll give you some living water. I'm just trying to get through the store so we get somewhere else, right? So now, jump down, jump down to uh, uh, verse number four, 15, 15. Okay? Watch this. The woman said unto, unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that said as thou truly. Jesus had just operated in the word of knowledge because he gave her some facts that nobody shouldn't have known that didn't know her. Now, Jesus just come up on this girl. He didn't know this girl from Shaquita. But he began to reveal to her everything about her life. Jesus busted her out smooth. He said, well, where your husband at? He said, I don't have none. He said, you, yeah, 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 you showing up, you don't have none. The five that you had before, they wasn't yours either. And the one you're shacking up with now ain't your husband. Uh-huh. And she went, Marvin, and told the whole city, come see a man who has told me everything about my life because he had the word of knowledge operating. Okay? That's one instance. Okay? Go now to, uh, go now to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter number, chapter number 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. The word of knowledge, watch this now, will expose hypocrites. When you operate in the word of knowledge, it will expose some hypocrites. All right. Now, 2 Kings chapter 5. Naaman, a ruler, Watch this now. He was a, a great man in Syria. He had leprosy. He was sick. They tell him, there is a man of God over in Israel. Go see him. So Naaman goes to see Elijah, Elisha, and gets to Elisha's house, and Elisha don't even come outside to see him. He starts tripping with Elisha, saying, man, don't you know who I am? Don't you know where I came from? You could at least come out and greet me. Elijah said, you want to be healed? Go dip yourself seven times in a Jordan. And he got fired up. He said, what? Man, that's some dirty water. That's, that's some Galveston Beach kind of water. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, he said, man, look, I'm from Florida. Our water clear. And you want me to go dip in the Jordan seven times? You got to be crazy. Okay, watch this. So, so his servant goes to him and says, Master, if the man of God would have told you to do some great thing, would you not have obeyed him? He said, well, go ahead and dip. So he went dip as as man of God said, Elisha said, came up. The Bible says he was healed of his leprosy, all right? Comes back and wants to give a gift to the man of God, right? Now, I just want to bring you up to verse 15. Now, verse 15, we there, right? And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. But he said, as the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. All right? 
Jump down to verse 21. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master had sent me, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a little money, some gaiters, and some clothes. That's my paraphrase. Verse 23. And Naaman said, be content, double your money, take some clothes, take the gaiters, and go. All right? Verse 25. But he went in and stood before his master. And, and Elijah said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went nowhere. Nowhere. I didn't go nowhere. I've been here all the time. Natalie, I didn't even leave the house. I've been right here. Verse 26. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants? The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. This was a word of knowledge. Elisha did not see him go meet Naaman to get the stuff. But the Spirit of God gave him a word of knowledge that said, that boy, that boy tripping. Amen? He's a hypocrite. You said you wasn't taking an offering today. He said, I want the stuff. All right? So when you want to expose the hypocrites around you, see, if, if Holy Ghost will give me the word of knowledge, he'll let me see their heart before they ever expose themselves. Okay, okay. This same boy, Gehazi, if you go back to chapter 4, when the Shunammite woman wanted to build the man of God a house on their quarters, she did that after she got permission from her husband, right? The woman, the Shunammite woman, gets blessed with a child. The child dies of a concussion. The woman takes the baby, puts the baby on the man of God's bed. Tells, she says, servant, get me a horse. We're going to go see the man of God. Yeah. Gets to the man of God. He sees her far off, the Bible says, and he shouts her, is all well? <laughs> and she says, all is well. <laughs> but when she gets in there, she gives him the report, something's wrong with my child. So he tells Gehazi, take my staff. Go lay it on the child and the child should be well. This same Gehazi, this same hypocrite, Gehazi gets to the house, lays the staff on the child, nothing happens because his heart wasn't right. Amen? His heart wasn't right. The prophet knew that he should have been able to do it, but because he was being exposed, amen, he couldn't have that power. Look, he would have been the next one in line to receive the double portion yeah, yeah. Wow. if he would have just honored the man of God. Yeah. But the word of wisdom exposed him. Right. Oh. Right. <laughs> 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 Woo! Okay, here's another word of wisdom. Okay, 2 Kings chapter 6. I'm going to just talk all the way through this, all right? 2 Kings chapter 6. All right, so here's this, the Syrians, they wanted to fight and kill the children of Israel. But God, through a word of knowledge, gives Elijah their plans, their blueprints on just how they were going to be attacked. Elijah tells the king of Israel, hey, look, it's coming, it's about to come. So the king of Syria thinks 
that there's a spy in the camp. And so his, 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 his servants around him say, he say, no king, we, we don't have a spy in the camp. It's that man of God over in Israel. He, look, God has given him all your dreams, all your plans and visions. He said, okay, well, let's go get him. Let's go get him. Let's kill this guy. They get there. The servant of God tells his servant to go out and, and get some water. He goes out and sees all the armies of God, all the armies of the enemy. <clears throat> and then gets there and say, come back in and say, Master, we're about to die. Elisha says, there's more with us than there are with them. That, that's more with us. And I can just imagine the servant says, something is wrong. He's been drinking too much Kool-Aid today. I see all them armies out there. I see how the chariots and the horses and all that stuff, but he says there's more with us than there's with them. And then Elisha prays, Lord, open his eyes that he might see. Because he got a word of knowledge now. And then when he goes out and sees, he sees the angels encamp around the enemy. But he had a word of knowledge of how those people were operating. Amen. <laughs> See, see, watch this now. I, I, I recall uh, when, I was, uh, when I was working <clears throat> at Exxon Mobil, uh, before it was Exxon Mobil, it was just mobile. Uh, it was the blending and packaging plant <clears throat> that I was working at. And uh, so God allowed me to, to hear of all the strategies of management who was trying to fire me because of my stance, okay? Because I was a steward, a union steward, and uh, I was the one that was required that when a problem ever existed in, 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 in that plant and they came to me and said, hey, look, I got a problem with management, it was my job to go to, to management and tell them they were wrong, okay? So they didn't like that. You know, they don't like nobody telling them they wrong. Let me do what I want to do to you. Just yeah. take your check and go. Well, no, I'm not like that. Once I made my probation, I became a bad brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Move on. Amen. So, uh, so, so, God began to expose their plans to me, how they were trying to set me up. Amen. And so, here's how, here's how God did it. God had one of them to come tell me what they said in their meeting. <laughs> so they coming around the corner. They coming around that corner. They coming around that corner. Praise the Lord. So when they came around the corner, they said, hey, <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> Amen. But God will reveal those things. And then, look, when you get a word of knowledge, see, I believe that many of you have people around you that are leeches. They will suck the life out of you. A word of knowledge will expose them. Amen. Our, our prayer is, God, reveal those people who shouldn't be around us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give, give us revelation of, 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 of their heart. Because, see, some people's heart is just to get what they can get. See, but when you have a word of knowledge, you can be cautious about that thing. Oh, oh, see, they, see, they have the wrong, their motives are wrong. And the Holy Spirit, through the word of knowledge, will reveal to you, hey, I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with them. Amen. Amen. See, some of you brothers, you need to watch out right now. Amen. Get a word of knowledge about all these little women that be passing you by. Ooh, I said, bro. See, so, see y'all would say, well, Pastor, what about the brother? I'm talking to the brothers right now. Get a word of knowledge. <laughs> Woo, praise the Lord. The word of knowledge. The word of knowledge. Amen. <clears throat> In 1 Samuel, Saul loses his donkeys. Goes to the prophet Samuel. God gives Samuel a word of knowledge on where the donkeys are. But in the process of telling Samuel, Saul where the donkeys were, Samuel begins to reveal to Saul his future. What God's plans were for him. Amen? So if you have something that has been lost, amen, Holy Spirit can give you a word of knowledge and tell you exactly where it is. 
Amen. Okay. Just because you don't have the education for a particular thing, a particular job, doesn't mean that you can't do the job. Just because you don't have the degree on the wall that says, I went to Lamar and got this degree, doesn't mean that you can't do the job. I can ask Holy Spirit to give me a word of knowledge that will supersede the degree. Amen. I mean, there's many things I do now. I tell God, I, in the natural, I don't know how to do that. In the natural, I don't know how to do it. But now, God, you already know. All I need to do is know the mind of God. Give me a word of knowledge, God, and I'll do this thing. That's why that's why, look, listen to me now. That's why any assignment that God gives me, I don't care if I don't know how to do it. I don't care if I, if I, if, if I, I don't have a book for it. I, look, I, I, I sit there and I pray in the Holy Ghost. God, give me a word of wisdom on this thing, a word of knowledge now, so I can, I can function in this thing. You told me to do it. Now, give me a word of knowledge so I can do it. And then all of a sudden, boom, Holy Spirit will say, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. This is how you get it done. And it, it amazes the mind of people because they want to they know what kind of degree you have. What schools did you matriculate in? How much higher education you have? I say, I got the highest. I got the highest education. I got the highest. I got the highest education. I got Holy Ghost. Amen. I got Holy Spirit. <laughs> See, you still, you still have a student loan. My loan has been erased. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus. The word of knowledge. The word of knowledge. Hallelujah. See, I didn't wear a watch today, so y'all in trouble. I'm not just messing with y'all. I'm just messing with y'all. Okay, let me just give you this, this last one real quick. <clears throat> the gift of... Uh, let me give you the gift of wisdom. Amen. The word of wisdom. The word of wisdom. Amen. <clears throat> the word of wisdom is confused many times with simple wisdom in life's affairs. Okay? And that is not what it is. Amen. The word of wisdom speaks of the future. Amen. It speaks of the future. Kind of like Joseph. In Genesis chapter 37, God gave Joseph a word of, of wisdom when he came down to saving his people. He began to give Joseph in Genesis 37, just make a note of it. He gave him a dream. And the Bible says his brothers hated him for the dream. But it was a word of wisdom that would deliver his people in the future. It took some time for it to manifest. And I'm sure that when Joseph went to God and said, this is not how the dream looked when you first gave it to me. Because what you said was, they were going to bow down to me. But right now, they didn't put me in a pit. They done sold me into slavery. Now, I've been thrown in prison for something I didn't do. Yeah. Amen? Now, folk forgot about me. Yeah. Yeah. But, but God still gave him a word of wisdom uh -huh. that one day, yeah. your brothers will bow down to you. Yeah. And you will save your people. Yeah. Word of wisdom. Word of wisdom. See, see, God can give you a word of wisdom about your family. That you're the one. That if you just get your life right. That if you would just honor God with all you are. That you will be the catalyst to save your family. And he'll give you a word of knowledge so that when, you, when you're about to make a bad decision, Holy Spirit will say, no, oh, hold up, hold up now. I gave you a word of wisdom on this thing. That one day you're going to be the catalyst to bring your family out. And just like Joseph did when the woman came and took his coat, he said, look, woman, I can't sleep with you. It ain't about you. It ain't about the opportunity that we have. What it's about is my relationship with God and the word of wisdom that he gave me. And he said, look, look, I can't, I, I can't, I can't mess with you. I, I can't sleep with you. I know you fine and all that, but I cannot sleep with you. And she took offense to that thing. That girl said, all of this? You turning all of this down? 
Don't you see me twisting all around this place? <laughs> he said, he say, look, even though we have opportunity, amen, I know everybody's out the house. But just because everybody's out the house don't mean Holy Ghost is not here. Amen. And I, I, can't, I, can't, I, I can't mess with you. I cannot mess with you because this is about me and God. Amen. See, when I get married, I get me. I, ooh, praise the Lord. Move on, Pastor. Move on, boo. I got a word. I got a word of wisdom on that one. Praise the Lord. Word of wisdom. Amen. <laughs> some, of y'all, some, <laughs> some of y'all just got that. Some of y'all just got that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, next week, next week, next week, we'll start talking. We'll talk about the other, the other parts of the nine gifts, amen? But I, I need you to understand. I need you to understand about Holy Spirit. I really do. I really need you to understand his ministry, what he's doing right now, amen? Because if you know his assignment right now and know that he's living in you, he's with you everywhere you go, I believe that you will make better decisions for your life. That's the whole purpose. Holy Spirit is trying to get God in us to live it out in the earth realm. Just like Jesus lived it out in the earth realm, he's given us a helper to help us do the same things Jesus did. Amen? That's, that's why he's here. He's telling us, you can do this because I'm in you. Man, think about this for a second. If, if you really reverence Holy Spirit on the inside of you, you wouldn't be cussing your mate out. No, you, I, I guarantee you you wouldn't be doing that. If you had a revelation that Holy Spirit is in, you wouldn't slap your mate around. If you had a revelation that Holy Spirit is in me and in them, you wouldn't do it. But because you have no reverence, you don't have a revelation. Right. All things are gain. And I'm trying to get you to see that no, 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 this, this walk is more than just coming to church on Sunday. I, you know, you, you won't just show up on Sunday and just lift your hands and hallelujah. I mean, you got to beat right, you know. But it ain't about that. It's about letting the Holy Spirit do in me what God wants to be done in the earth realm. And when I allow Holy Spirit to do his perfect ministry in me, you're going to see some lives change. Yeah, you will. You, your, your life, first your life going to be changed. Hey, your life going to be changed. <laughs> yeah, your life going to be changed. I mean, your, your crooked walk will start going straight. I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh. I don't want nobody taking a fist and saying, who are you talking about but crooked? My life ain't crooked. My life ain't crooked. My life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But I got to stop because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen.